This podcast is part of the Batman Universe Podcast Network, hosted by the BatmanUniverse.net. Check out everything related to Batman and the entire Bat family at the BatmanUniverse.net, including news and original content related to comics, movies, television, merchandise, video games, and more. Also, check out some of the other unique podcasts that TBU has to offer. Consider supporting this podcast by becoming a patron on Patreon. Even $1 can go a long way in supporting this content that you enjoy. Look for a link over at thebatmanuniverse.net to offer your support now. And now, on with the show. It finally happened. Ian said one too many bad things about Tom Taylor, so we have tied him up, beat him up, and thrown him out of Babylon. This week, it's just Theo and I, and we are revolting, taking control of the podcast. People of revolution. Um, <laughs> so this week, welcome to the Robin Universe Tom Tabor, Tom Taylor Rebel cast. I am your host, Steph, and with me I have Viva Revolution. This is Theo. <laughs> this is Theo, and in case you didn't recognize today's intro song, that was the French national anthem uh, celebrating Revolution around the world, but today in our podcast. Viva, um, Viva Tom Taylor. Viva Tom Taylor. Unfortunately, there weren't many Tom Taylor books this week. <laughs> <laughs> but we shall sally forth, nevertheless. Um, and we'll start with our news brought to you by Theo. So there's not much in news. Since the last recording, uh, we got the news of the loss of comic artist Tim Sill, who is mm. best known for his work with Jeb Loeb on uh, Batman The Long Halloween and its subsequent series, Dark Victory, so on and so forth. Uh, so that was a tragic loss. You know, mm-hmm. we, we've we had a lot this year, you know, with, with Neil Adams and George Perez and now Tim Phil. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they, they always say that it comes in three. So I, I, I hope that's out three for the year and we can kind of leave, leave our comic legends alone. Please. Yeah, it was a rough week. Everyone. One of my favorite voice actors died too, so it was just like a big loss this week for the artistic community. Mm-hmm. Sorry, no. but other than that, um, since our last recording, solicitations also came out for the month of September. Uh, so you can always take a look and see what is going on there. The only thing that jumps out that that that's coming out that's the number one uh, is Batman versus Robin from Mark Wade. Um, before I get my thoughts, Steph, you had any thoughts? Well, so I, so Robin, it looks like might be ending because there is no Robin, there's no Damien Robin book in September. That's correct. No, it's, it's no. ending with uh, Williamson's last issue. Because I looked at last the solicits for August and it didn't say it was ending. Maybe I missed it. But, yeah, it, yeah, it is. But William, yeah. yeah, Williamson's last issue will lead into. It's supposed to lead into Mark Wade's series. Still not happy yeah. about it. We don't need another Batman yeah, versus Robin. We don't. Well, the one thing that struck out to me, and this is not a surprise from the solicits because we knew this before the solicits dropped, is that Tim Drake is getting his own Robin book, and it's going to focus on sort of his relationship with Bernard, but not really, because Bernard is going to be kidnapped, so that's great. But also, the only thing that book had going for it was the art, was the or the story, the Robin Bernard story. The only thing it had going for it was the art, and the artist on this book <laughs> is Riley Rosmo. So... <laughs> yeah, y'all have fun with that one. I, I will read the first issue only because... We're obligated to do so, but I can seriously see myself abstaining from this. I, I have not enjoyed anything that they've done with Tim since since Detective in Tynan's run. 
So since then, you know, he went on to Young Justice and changed his name in that stupid costume. Costume? And (laughs) called himself Drake? (laughs) Yeah, then all of a sudden he breaks up with Steph without telling anybody he was breaking up with Steph. Including Steph. (laughs) Yeah, including Steph. And, you know, now I'm I'm just, I don't know, DC doesn't, they can't get out of their own way. They're doing some dirty Um I don't want to spend too much time talking about that because that is not the Robin this Robin cast is about. <laughs> no, it is but, not. It, it, um, it, he needs yeah. to go back to Red Robin. There's only one Robin in the Batman universe, and that's Damian Wayne. I said it. I mean it. Uh, also, uh, I, uh, go, uh-huh. go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I had been willing to sacrifice myself and read this book, and then I realized who the artist was. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, Raleigh Rosmo only works on Harley Quinn. just it because does. Just because of what that book encompasses. Mm-hmm. Mariko right. Tamaki is not done with the Batman universe just yet. Coming out in September, Batman, One Bad Day, Two-Face. Uh, so oh, Mariko yeah. gets her hands on Harvey Dent. Uh, so I am definitely, you know, see, seeing that I've been reading her entire run and reviewing her entire run on Detective, I was, of course, saddened when it was announced she would be leaving the book uh, with this issue we're, revu- we're reviewing this evening. Uh, but I am also happy to know that she uh, is still going to be hanging around Gotham uh, this uh one shot, I think it's a one shot. It's going to uh, have art from Javier Fernandez uh, with a variant cover from Jim Lee and uh, Art Germ. But the colors for the for the book is going to be done by Jody Belair. Yay. And by the way, that variant cover by Jim Lee is absolutely stunning. It features my favorite Batgirl, Cassandra Cain, beating the, look like she beat the crap out of uh Harvey, but yeah, so that's coming out in September on the 20th. Uh, let's see, anything else in solicit? Well, bring, bringing it back to Tom Taylor, it looks like there's going to be like a chibi while they were kids story for Dark Knights of Steel. That looks exciting. Not quite chibi, but like they're all tiny children and it looks like it's going to be fantastic. And also, uh, since we're on Tom Taylor... <laughs> the second issue of Deceased War of the Undead Gods will be coming out on the 20th as well. So, yeah, Deceased. Whatever Ooh. happened with us in the Deceased cast? I guess we gave up on that. Well, yeah, I don't think anyone is listening. But if you guys want to go <laughs> find our Deceased cast, is that on Patreon? I don't remember. No, it, was, it, was, no, it, was, it was the special cast. It was a special cast. It was a special cast. Well, y'all, go see our Deceased cast and tell us if you want to hear more. We loved doing it. Um, yeah. Especially just to torture Ian because he hates Tom Taylor. <laughs> but we had fun. No, shut up, Ian. <laughs> we love you. Even though you're tied up and beat up. <laughs> uh, but I think that was it. Oh, right. And then the Harley. The Har- No, wait. What's Maybe it's just Harley. Oh, yeah. No, the Harley Quinn 30th anniversary special number one. It'll probably be the only one. Um Yay. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, uh, as I said last episode, I'll be reading one story out of that book. So, so oh, here's a question. Since it's Stephen Shadrick, do you think it's going to be his Harleen? It better be his Harleen. I'm going to be upset if it isn't. Yeah, that would be really cool. Because that was a good book, y'all. Even if you don't like Harley, you should check out Harleen. That was a really good book. And then... uh on the sixth, there's look like there's a uh, a young adults an all ages book uh, from Jay Torres, Batman Night Watch number one with art by Eric Owen and Marcelo D. Chiera. Uh, again, that's coming out on the sixth of September. Uh, that looks fun. Yeah. 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 It, it, it definitely is all ages. Yeah, younger ages most likely, <laughs> but not like. Scooby Doo and Batman. No, no. <laughs> According to the cover, it's eight and above. So, eight and above. How they how they come up with that? They gave it to a seven year old. I don't like this. And they gave it to an eight year old. This is fantastic. 
And then there's a bunch of uh, collected editions that are coming out, such as Shadow War and uh, Catwoman Lonely City. So if you're the type that likes to wait on the uh, collected editions to come out before you pick up a book, like uh, I know in the Discord server a lot mentioned waiting until Batman Catwoman was finished, until they read it. So if you're that type of person... uh, be on the lookout and take a look at the the collected editions that are coming. That is me. That is Steph. And sometimes Ian, saying. but never Theo. But that is it for solicitations. I guess we mm-hmm. are ready to look at the reviews, right? Yep, let's go. We're starting with uh, 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 Detective Comics Never 1061. Detective Comics, number 1061, story one. Riddle Me This, the finale, written by Mariko Tamaki and Nadia Shamus, with art by Yvonne Reese. Talia confronts Riddler about the recent events involving the citizen criminals, revealing her involvement in giving Riddler information about Deb and Caroline Donovan. Riddler asks if she wants to stay for the upcoming episode. Talia declines, stating she has other business to deal with. Batman confronts Caroline, asking her how she got entangled with everything. We flash back one month earlier when Caroline attends a group session at the Arkham Tower led by Chase Meridian. The group consists of all the other citizen criminals, including Sarah Pett, the sister of Dr. Ware. Dr. Meridian convinces the group to release and own up on their past. A past that includes the fact that they each committed a crime that they had not paid for. Deb Donovan arrives at the scene and attempts to talk to her daughter. A smoke bomb goes off, allowing the younger Donovan to get away. Batman uses the sixth envelope from the scene to discover the whereabouts of the Riddler. He confronts him on camera and demands to know the whereabouts of Caroline Donovan. The Riddler plays dumb, a phone ranks, and it's Caroline. Batman and Batgirl, Cassandra Kane, arrive at the Gotham Harbor where they find Caroline Donovan and Chase Meridian tied up on the scale of, Lady Justice, of a Lady Justice statue. A speaker plays the Riddler's voice. He tells how the two are connected and how their corruption failed Gotham. Batman and Batgirl goes in for the, go in for the save but not before Batman is warned not to touch the scales. Batgirl saves Dr. Meridian while Batman moves in and grabs Caroline as the scales fall into the harbor. He tells her how the Riddler used her, but the judge is at peace. In fact, this is the most peace she's felt in quite a while. Pulling the trigger and killing Perry in the last issue will allow her to be at peace. The Riddler was correct, she says. If you want justice, you have to take it into your own hands. She needs Batman in the chin and falls into the harbor below. The GCPD is unable to find her body. Batman attempts to to comfort the grieving Deb Donovan, but she is finding her own comfort in the bottle of alcohol she's holding. Batman says he will be there for her if she needs him. Back at the new new Batcave, Bruce realizes he didn't, he's not alone. It's Talia. Bruce reveals that he knows of her connection with handing over the Donovans to Riddler for his plans. He also tells her that he knows she was the one spying on him the night he took Caroline to dinner. Talia explained she did that for personal reasons as she could not believe he would go on a date with her. Then again, he does have a type. She leaves her beloved alone. All right, so before we jacked him up and drew him in the closet, Ian had a few questions on this first story. And the first question is, where do you think Tamaki's place in tech runs compared to other writers? Well, so I've only read tech since since Rebirth started, but 
I think she is up there with Tynion. And I don't think anyone else even made the leaderboard <laughs> on this book between Tynion and Tamaki. I can't think of a single person who put... I think there was one story with Damien in it that was okay. I forget who wrote that. Tomasi. What? what? That, no. was, that, that was the first issue of Tomasi to run. Was it? It was a, yeah. a fill-in issue, though. Oh, like, it was, wait. Well, I think Taylor did a, an issue. It might have been. That might have been Taylor. That's kind of what yeah, I remember. That was the, that was the, uh, yeah, that was the even, issue where um, there was, I think there was a, either a kidnapping at the at the boy's home. Or something, yeah. yeah. It wasn't bad. It was definitely better than anything else. But yeah, I, yeah. Only, only Tanyan and Tamaki are on the leaderboard, and I think they're about equal. They have each have something I like about them, and and love both of them. And everyone else is just distant, 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 distant second. So I, I will, I will go and put Tamaki over Tanyan. And again, that's not saying. Tanya's run wasn't wasn't good. It was, you know, his his take on detective with bringing in that team aspect was something that we greatly needed, considering we didn't have all of that as Rebert started with regards to the rest of the Bat family. So we we had a place for him, and, and JT did a good job of giving those those guys voices you know as he he wrote those those issues um but i don't know there was something about what mariko tamaki did that was just and i think i think the piece that really puts her over jt for me um was the voice she gave bruce wayne because you know, with that first arc, the neighborhood, it was real. It was a Batman story starring Bruce Wayne, and mm-hmm. you know, we we saw a side of him that we hadn't seen in any of the other Bat books at the time, and she just had a great way of handling him and every other character that she had, um, not just in that first arc, but in the subsequent arcs as well um now ultimately and again this is old timer theo you know chuck dixon is still my batman writer whether it was his work on batman itself or on detective comics because he did both um and you know as again as much as i love mariko tamaki you know i don't think she or anyone else could ever touch the work that you know, he did. Now, again, back then, you know, he had the luxury of having Denny O'Neill had, as his group editor who kept everything together. But, yeah, Mariko is, is she's second place for me um, after after Chuck Dixon. So that's, that's my vote. I'm pretty sure Ian would probably have her right under, right under JT because I know he loved... JT's run on Detective as well. This should be pretty simple. Do you think there was any setup for what we're getting with Ron B? No, not at all. First of all, I don't, yeah, no. This, it doesn't end on any kind of setup. And based on what we got in Catwoman, this, I don't know, doesn't seem very Ron V ish. Right. Um, so if, you guys read my review of, of, of this issue of this issue on the website. You'll kind of see my full thoughts on um, this question here. You know, which is, you know, do you consider this this final arc to be the true ending of Tamaki's run, or would you consider it to be shadow since this final arc had a co-writer? I mean, I I not necessarily because it. <laughs> had a co-writer <laughs> but just that this was a really i don't know i don't think it was a weak story but i don't think it went where it could have um i was really disappointed in in 
a lot of the plot holes and a lot of stuff didn't make sense about people's motivation and what they were doing. Like, this just didn't seem like a Tamaki story. I think in the past, like, the only thing I've really had to complain about with Tamaki stuff is some, like, logistic engineering stuff, which, honestly, I don't expect liberal arts majors to really understand anyway, so I give them a bit of a pass. But, like, other than that, her stories have been really, really good. And this one just had a lot of why are people doing what they're doing? What time frame is this? I don't understand. Like, it's just, I don't know. It was it was a little weak. So, for that reason, I would consider Shadow of the Bat the, the final because it just... It was a good ending, and this was not. <laughs> yeah, I, I, as as I said in my my review, this 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 last arc was really a disservice, but a disservice to us, the reader, but a disservice to Tamaki as well. It, it didn't seem like this was a Tamaki story, and it's possible that you know she played a little part. You know, she played little in in, in scripting this, and this was more of a Shama story than anyway than anyone. Um, but it, it it was just it was too rushed. It wasn't fleshed out. It was a lot of holes that were were just left. It. It made the characters seem totally different from characters we had recently seen mm-hmm. in Tamaki's run. For example, it made it made Chase Meridian seem like a villain. You know, she's mm-hmm. getting all of these criminals together and say, "Hey, I know you all are criminals. You all need to own up to it." And she's using this against Caroline Donovan. You know, because she's being corrupt with the DA and. Well, even if she's not being corrupt, she's just being stupid. Like, I mean, I think someone even points out, like, this is not, this this goes against patient confidentiality. Like, honestly, for what she did, she should, even if she wasn't evil, quote unquote, she should have her license revoked. Yes. Like, what she did was ridiculous. And then inviting a judge to this kind of meeting, I was like, this was the absolute worst judgment I've ever seen. It it, it just, I mean, there was just so much that did not make any sense. Talia Mm -hmm. seemed like an idiot. I mean, Talia knows who Bruce is. She had to have known that Bruce's motivation with going on a date with Mm -hmm. Caroline was to pick her brain to solve the case. It had nothing to do with any type of interest Mm -hmm. in, in, in Caroline Donovan. And yet Talia is written like a Gone, jealous lover. You know what I mean? Yeah. And mm-hmm, it, it mm-hmm. just, it, there was just so much that just did not make any sense. And it just did not seem like typical Mariko Tamaki writing style that we've gotten during this last run, during this complete run of Detective up until this point. And again, I just think it was just a total, total disservice to what she's done over the past year or so and what we as readers as has has read over that same time period. Because again, I will continue to say that up until this arc, Detective was the best bat book out there. Mm-hmm. And I just think we got... I just think we got screwed on it. I agree. So with that in mind, let's get on over to uh, the backup story. Uh, Gotham Girl Interrupted by Cena Grace with art by David Lapham. Gotham Girl flies out of the window carrying Chase Meridian, but is pulled back in by Huntress. Huntress attempts to subdue Gotham Girl with a tranquilizer cocktail, but to no avail. As Claire turns her attention back to Chase Meridian, the doctor asks her why she wants her dead. Gotham Girl tells her of the information that she found on Andre's laptop that implicated her in some cruel mental health tactics. Chase swears it wasn't her, but now they know who is. 
Claire, Dr. Meridian, and Huntress confront Dr. Rhea, who admits to using Chase's computer to conduct her cruel tactics that eventually cost Andrea's life. Dr. Rhea isn't concerned until it's revealed that Oracle has been listening in and she has all the evidence needed to bring Margot Rhea down. The disgraced doctor tells them where the project is being conducted. Before leaving, Claire gets a little revenge of her own. She eventually, she eventually flies high where the lack of oxygen causes her to black out and she crashes back to the ground. Back at the vacant Wayne Manor, Claire fi finds Huntress waiting on her. Being a former patient at Arkham Tower, Helena understands what's going through Claire's head. Huntress explains the importance of connection and tells her this is likely what Andre was trying to do with her. Connect. Claire doesn't realize it, but she's being watched. Talia al Ghul is looking for a Superman of her own, and she needs to try a little harder to push Claire over the edge to become just that. And this story will be continued in Batman vs. Robin. Well... It says Falio Talia al Ghul's adventures in the pages of Batman vs. Robin. But you might be right. Because that book's a disaster already, so why not include Gotham Girl? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that. Well, I'm assuming it's going to have to include Claire because, I mean, it, 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 it mentions that. I mean, she's looking at Claire as this, this is going on. I, I don't know. Just. There's so much already coming to that book. It's got Satana. It's got Alfred, who's dead. It's got Flatline, who is crazy now. Anyway. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I don't know. I can't believe I'm not looking forward to that book. It makes me so sad. And, and again, I absolutely, Mark Wade is the writer of my favorite AU book ever, Kingdom Come. And I just have zero interest in it. And I'm, I don't know why. It, well, I know why. We don't need another Batman versus Robin. Hell, we just had yeah. Batman versus Robin in some pages of Robin already. Yeah. So. And and I was thinking about it. In almost every book that's Batman versus blank, it's like for five minutes, and then they work together, or they've been taken over by someone evil, and and they need to defeat the evil who's taking over. Like, like a lot of the movies, I think, are like Justice League versus Teen Titans or something. And oh, I'm I'm, a, I'm 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 pretty you know. sure this is gonna this is gonna probably have Batman and and Robin eventually team up to take out Talia Talia and uh, Gotham Girl because she's gonna somehow flip her again. I I just I don't know. Um, but I guess the one question that I had with regards to the backup, and it's something that I have complained about in the past with backup stories, but considering, considering the interaction between Talia and Riddler when she said she had other business to deal with or the way that um, or the way that she left Bruce alone in the new new cave. Uh, do you think this eventually, do you think that last part eventually was leading to this and the fact that she's been messing around, you know, and got them hacking at Claire? I think it's what? Do you think that these two stories are connected in the fact that oh. she, she may have been in Gotham all this time? Hacking around with Claire. Uh, I mean, I guess. I mean, the commonality between all three stories that we're covering tonight are Talia. Um, so it's just, it's, but in light of what happens in Robin, I'm just really confused about what Talia is even doing <laughs> in Gotham. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't understand what she's doing here or or why she's here or or anything. So, yes, they're connected, but it's confusing why it's connected. Oh, of course it's con it's definitely confusing. Yeah. I will not yeah. argue with that. Okay, pause. When did Robin come out? I meant to pull that. The same day they came out. They both came out today. 
I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think they both came from yeah. the same folder. It did. But Talia has been showing up in Discord. I'm mean, Discord. <laughs> I'm so distracted right now. Talia has been showing up in tech for the last few weeks, so it didn't really matter what order you read and it in because she was she's in been there. And then she was in Batman doing all the whole uh, Shadow War stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I rating. I really wish you could have just ended on uh, Shadow of the Bat, but... Me too. I agree. That would have been great. Okay, so we're going to do uh, out of five... Uh, Best friend heads? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Gargle, 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 gargle heads. <laughs> so, um, I think... Uh, I didn't hate the backup. The backup wasn't terrible. I know a lot of people don't love the backup, but I personally didn't think it was that bad. Uh, this, this last issue was just so fraught with issues and plot holes and things that didn't make sense. I just... I think I wrote down three, but I don't I don't feel that way anymore. Two point five out of five gar So when I finished my review and I submitted it to publishing, I originally gave this a two point five. But then I thought about it and I just thought the art from Yvonne Reese was just too good. And like you, I thought the backup ended better than it started started it just started terribly but it it was slightly better despite the david labamart so um i actually sent dustin a message to change it to a tree for the site so if you go to the website that's what you'll see but for the purpose of this show uh i am going to give it a 275 and since 275 you're gonna do the math I am because I don't have my fancy schmancy calculator, oh. but it's it's going to be like two point six something. Yeah, two point six two five. And we don't care about the mode because we don't tied up in the closet. <laughs> Plus, there isn't one. Okay. Whether you are a first-time TBU Comics podcast listener, a 13-year veteran, or anything in between, we'd love to hear what you think about this episode or any of the comics we discussed. Send emails to tbu at thebatmanuniverse.net. Join our Discord server linked at thebatmanuniverse.net. Send us a tweet at tbu underscore comics. Or, if you're a patron, leave us a comment on our Patreon page. We'd also love it if you left us a review on iTunes. We'd love to read your comments on the next episode of the Batman Universe Comics Podcast. Batman may claim he works alone, but we know that he needs the Bat Family. Join the TVU Bat Family and let us know what you think. Robin number 15, Parent Trap, written by Joshua Williamson, art by Roger Cruz. Talia is being held at the DEO field office in Gotham, talking to Chase Meridian, who tells her that the raw that the Raw's deal with the DEO to turn himself and Talia Ooh, wait, in wait, is wait, uh, wait, uh -huh. wait, 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 gotta stop. What, what, what? That's, that's not Chase Meridian. Yes, it is. No, that's not. Yes, it is. No, that's not. That's the head of the DEO. No, look, because look later, we don't really know who that is, but then later. Batman and Robin go visit her, and... Oh, no, that's, that's the head of the DEO. Oh, Director Chase. Why do they have the same name? <laughs> oh, that's confusing. Okay, so my question is invalid then, because I thought that was Chase Meridian. Okay. Okay, that's not fair. Having two blondes with the same name. Okay, yes, but, whatever. But, but her name is Cameron Chase. Cameron Chase, Okay. Well, then I need to rewrite my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for catching that. Okay, good. Because I was so confused about why Chase has different personalities and like. Well, she's, I mean, in detective, she did. Motivations. I mean, I mean she just, it, she just was not, she, she had different personalities in the, in, the, in both stories. Like again, in the, in the main story. It well, was, then I'm, I want to add a question. I want to add a question then to our 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 detective. Tech. Yes. Okay. So 
Rewind. So why is Chase Meridian? Stupid Meridian Meridian, yes. Why is Dr. Meridian <laughs> stupid to the point of villainous in the main story and then accused of villainy, but then it, it just I, I don't rec- personified? No, what's the word? Rectified, fixed? It, you are not going to make me believe that Mariko Tamaki wrote that that story on her own. I just, the voice is just completely different than what we got just three issues ago in shadows of the bat. And then again, like you mentioned, here it is in the backup story. And it's just complete opposite of what we got in the main story. Just, I, I just don't get it. Like I get that humans are, What's the word? Full of mistakes. <laughs> they make mistakes. They err. And that any ally of Batman, especially a civvy a- ally, is going to make mistakes. But this is such, like, a stupid thing to do. Like, not, hey, this is not like AA. This is like, hey, everyone in this room has committed a crime, including this person who's a city judge. Um, and uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, she needs to have her license removed. I and just, then, I just don't get it. I really don't. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, my hope was that you know eventually we'll get that Batwoman book with her and and Kate <laughs> constantly flirting with each other. And mm-hmm. now I don't want her anywhere near Kate because I could just see Kate beating the crap out of her for doing stupid stuff. If this uh, is the Chase Meridian we're going to end up getting, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now pause for station identification. (laughs) Okay. (sighs) Robin number 15. Parent Trap, written by Joshua Williamson, artist Roger Cruz. Talia is being held at the DEO field office in Gotham, talking to Cameron Chase, who tells her that the Roz deal with the DEO to turn himself and Talia in is off because he's dead and the deal, as it was, is no longer valid. After Chase fails to get Talia to talk about Roz's plan and intentions, she begins to poke at the mama bear, hinting that she may expose some of Damien's more sinister past. Meanwhile, Robin is taking on a Joker wannabe troop of clowns that soon become a little too much for just one person to handle when the bat family comes into the rescue batman nightwing tim robin steph and cast bat girls come as backup during their pizza and faux pizza celebration news comes in that talia has escaped which batman and damian robin investigate she apparently overpowered chase and escaped the deo office after chase made insinuations about damian The duo find the rogue mother quickly when Talia and Bruce quickly start fighting over who Damien will be staying with. Damien stops the fight, begging them to get along and respect each other and respect his decision to go with neither of them. Before Damien leaves to do his own mission, he asks Batman to let Talia go. Damien leaves, refusing to tell his dad where he is going. Talia finds a car left for her with fresh clothes and her sword left for her by Director Chase. They struck a deal where Talia would go free and Chase would leave Damien alone in exchange for Talia becoming a Lazarus spy. Damien returns to Lazarus Island where Connor Hawk, some former Lazarus tournament players, and others are rebuilding the island into a town. Connor and Damien plan to make the island their base. They plan to investigate the island further first, though, when they are interrupted by a man washed up on the beach. It's Lord Deathman, and he's looking for Damien to save him from Flatline, who has apparently gone out of control. So question one, oh, right, is no longer valid because this Chase is not Chase Meridian. And so she's different because she's a different person. <laughs> question number two, um, do you think the small inclusion of the Bat, Bat family was fan service? Or do you think that they plan on making the Bat family a part of the Batman versus Robin storyline? I don't care because that panel was absolutely awesome. <laughs> I uh, know. I call it fan service, and I feel like that's doing it a disservice because we beg for more brat family interaction, even if it's just completely non 
non-story relevant. And so this was fantastic. Yes, it was yeah. absolutely wonderful. I mean, we haven't gotten any hints from the solicits or anything that the family will play a part, but I don't see why they won't in some fashion, even if it's minor. Because even though I've already complained that there's going to be too many people and too much going on, if that too much going on is the Bat family, I will take it. I did love that that Damien was wondering who ate all the veggie gluten free pizza, and Steph's like, "No, no, nobody, nobody ate your pizza. <laughs> it's over there." <laughs> I thought that was great. What was your reaction when Batman agreed, or at least didn't say anything, when uh, Damien asked to let Talia go? It. W- it wasn't a typical Batman response, but yeah, even more, how did he just let he lets his fourteen-year-old son just go and live wherever? What 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 kind of father does that? I mean, I, well, I, he's never been able to stop him before. Uh, that's just you know, you let him run away, but to just oh yeah, go on. I won't. I trust you. What? If my parents trusted me at 14 to let me just go off and do whatever, I, I don't know. I mean, I didn't have Wayne money, but still. Um, well, <laughs> Damien's main friends right now are Connor and Connor Hawk and aged up John. I, w- I wonder if they're trying to push the aged up Damien, even though he is only 14. He's looking pretty tall here. And- I, I hope they're not trying to super age him up like Ugh, yeah. next year he'll be 17 and, and, and i will be Ugh. you know and then the idea of ever getting the original super sons back you know will officially be dead which i absolutely hate but unless they do a complete reboot and de-age them which would be fantastic <laughs> you would have no complaints for me i would have no complaints but yeah, I thought it was odd. I, I didn't think it was fully in character. I think Talia, I mean, no. I was going to say, I guess Talia didn't really do anything wrong. But I guess she tried to kill a lot of Deathstroke's people. And did she actually which, kill anybody? Well, considering what she did with Markovia in Leviathan. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I wondered, because ugh, Batman is Batman, I wondered if he knew something was going up between the DEO and Talia. That's possible. That's the only thing I can think. Cause I like to think of Batman as, as only just like he, or I guess he's not, he has mercy too, but he, he's pretty big on the, on the, on the justice. And he knows that Talia, <laughs> Talia done messes up, but I guess then they play smoochy face all the time. I don't know. Whatever. I like to think that maybe he knows. So, so, so let me ask this. Since you mentioned, mm-hmm. Smo- smoochy face. <clears throat> Do you think to get us, us being the readers of Batman, so not just you and I, but to get us away from this whole Bruce Selina thing, that they are trying to eventually set something up with these two again, because she's been around a yeah. lot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can say the kissy face didn't mean much at all, all you want, you know, but the fact that she already knows where the new, new cave is and she, mm-hmm. you know, she's just walking around and she's, you know, changing into her lingerie in, you know, front of him with no problem whatsoever. And, you know, he's just standing there like there's nothing wrong that, you know, I, I completely agree. I think they're they're starting to inoculate us to the idea <laughs> so that when it actually comes, we won't have an uproar, um, a revolt, <laughs> the anti-Talia cast. <laughs> yeah. No, I think you're right. They're, they're trying to get us ready for it. And, I mean, they took Selena out. She's been off, off the table for a while. They're pairing her up with someone else. And she's flirting with... She's flirting with Harley, and 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 they're they're trying to get her together with that guy who doesn't show his face, and he looks like Ghostmaker. And then, and then, yeah, they have Bruce with ugh, Zatanna in Urban Legends, <laughs> and in all um, cases, you know, I missed. And now it's Talia. I missed everything that you said. Oh no! 
Oh, yeah, you went. That's just okay. Went, you just went blank. <laughs> uh, so what well, did you say? basically, I said I think you're right that that they are they're trying to start inoculating us to the idea of of Talia, so that when it actually happens, we won't scream. Yeah, because you, you haven't read 125 yet, have you? I have not. My virgin eyes haven't read it yet. Okay, nope. and, and yeah, virgin eyes. I'm not going to spoil it, but I just think it's it's even more so going to give this whole you know yeah Bruce and Selena will never be back together uh, together again thing a thing make it more and more factual and again compared to you know Ian's favorite Jezebel Jet you know if there's anyone other than Selena who could be with Bruce it would be Talia simply because of the Damien connection but you know that's not needed but it, it it truly seems like that's what they're trying to set us up for yeah and i i don't want to hate on something just because of a pairing like it has to have to earn my hate so i hate bernard so i hate satana <laughs> but if it's well written i will i will read it and enjoy it but it's is just not my favorite, and that's okay. I'm allowed to have not a favorite. It's fine. Yeah, not and see, I don't hate Zatanna. I just hate the idea of of them constantly trying to put her and Bruce together. Because I mean, we even got that doing was that JT's run of Detective, where there was that one arc where she was around, and they kept talking about the past and stuff that happened in the past. Yeah, I just don't like Zatanna, period. Like, oh. it doesn't even really have to do with her relationship with Bruce. I just don't like her. Oh. But that's okay. It's okay. We're all allowed to have our opinions. And I'm not going to let it, you know, whatever. I guess it is spoiling Robin versus Batman. But there's a lot of things about Batman versus Robin that I'm not liking. Oh, well, so I guess my second question, my last question is invalid as well. Because technically, Dr. Meridian wasn't in this. I thought... Uh, Cameron Chase was Dr. Marine because they were both blonde and were called Chase. But uh, does seeing Talia everywhere annoy you as it does me? It it annoys me from the standpoint of what I just said that yeah. I think that they are trying to set up relationship time between her and Bruce again. Yeah. And considering the heartbreak that many of us are still dealing with uh, with regards to Batman 50 and Thanos is still disappointed too. Um, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not ready. I don't know if I'm ready for that again. In the end, you know, they have a, they have a more direct connection to each other due to mm-hmm. Damien, but Hey, I know plenty of parents who, take care of their kids without being together. So don't see why we need it here. So, but yeah, if, if, if Bruce and Selena officially break up, break up because of the, I was on a break fight that plagued friends for many years. I will, I may have a letter to the editor to write. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, I want I to see that before you send it over. <laughs> Dear Mr. Slash Miss Slash uh, Non-Binary d- d- Editor <laughs> No, you d- Dear Ben Abernathy yeah, that, Dear Ben Abernathy Yes You suck <laughs> Please stop stealing storylines from friends That was a horrible show This is a horrible storyline Put Thank Bruce you. and Selena back together We appreciate it And get someone in the Superman room to DH John yeah. Oh, yes. Actually, I might put that first. I care about that more. Um, so, out of... Oh, do you have any questions or, or ideas for the things to say about this issue? No, I, I said all I had to say, especially from the Talia standpoint. Out of five gluten-free vegetarian pizzas, how many would you give it? I mean, if it was pizzas, I w- it would be zero since I'm allergic to tomato <laughs> sauce and I can't <laughs> eat pizza. But I ah. will, I know, I've been allergic to tomatoes since I was in high school. I will give it a uh, three and a half. I think I will, too. 
the art is pretty good. And I love seeing Damien. And I like that he's setting up his own thing. This Talia still hacks me off. But it, I like that she's working with the DEO, at least. That feels like it's at least some kind of redemption. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Rewind. Rewind. <laughs> okay. So, re rewind question. So, <laughs> what do you think of Lord Deathman washing up on the shore? Think it's a, think oh, it's a, man. Think, think it's a trap? I think it's a trap. Yes. What do you think? I think it's a trap because I mean, yeah. you know, he he had that heart with the idea of of doing something with Damien, and yeah. So I I I definitely see this being a trap, and he's and and flatline is the scapegoat, especially yeah. considering the solicitations. But again, I gotta stop. I do wonder if Flatline is in on it. I don't know. Or maybe she'll have a changed heart. I don't know. But, I mean, I don't trust Lord Deathman as far as I can throw him. So Yeah, I, I, that will be interesting to see. I don't know if she's a part of it, but I don't think she is. So. On to Greater Gotham. Thumbs up, thumbs down, neutral, or abstain. And we're starting with Batman Superman, World's Finest, number four. Uh, for me, uh, World's Finest, it is an abstain. I, I, last issue kind of did it for me, and I got just turned off. Again, thumbs I, up. I'm enjoying it, but yeah, it's it's getting it's gotten a little weird. Yeah, and again, I just don't get it. I I, I love Mark Wade, but just this just isn't it. Yeah, and I don't understand. I don't think this storyline is what's going to go into the Batman versus Robin, but eh, I don't know. Who knows? Hmm. Batman the Night number six. Two thumbs up. I. Gave it two thumbs up as well. It oh, was absolutely fantastic. And although I, I guess, can't... I guess this kills uh, Ian's idea of their brotherly connection, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, because this is this is a long time ago, and so they 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 were not getting along at the beginning of JDT's introduction of Ghostmaker. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. But, this this is totally different. He he was ready to pull the trigger. He was. That's true. That's not just a little. That's true. You are right. However, I have never been so excited for a writer co to come on to Batman as I am right now. Like, this this story has made me excited for Chip Zdarsky. Totally agree. Uh, again, yeah. and I will say it for the umpteenth time. If if this isn't incorporated into his Batman run, I am going to be. It'll be a crime, like no joke, a crime. You can't make something this good <laughs> right before going on to Batman, and then not have this be like the setting for your history of Batman. Like it's ridiculous. This is so good. Yep. Uh, Catwoman number forty-four. It continues to be an abstain for me. Although I think Ian said he did he like no. He said he he hated no. this one. He wants to gouge his eyes out. He hates this book, and I'm finally well. No, on the so same page. so so what for issue forty three? If I can remember, he said that it wasn't as bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, <laughs> but this issue is not that issue. Um, it was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the killer chasing Salida is like bombing the place and so instead of leaving Sal selena stays in a heavily populated area where she is going to get murderated in in playing uh uh what's it called murderated <laughs> what's the what's the girls beating each other up on skates thing called derby uh, roller, roller derby. derby she stays to play the roller derby and then after getting chased by red claw they find a stalker who has been chasing selena and harley this whole time and they all three women bond over their hatred of men and then red claw just abandons her mission and joins and joins selena and harley in their mission to just like bum around gotham i don't know it was weird thumbs down oh yeah. I, uh, I, I Dark Crisis, it. Young Justice, number one. No, um, I'm, I'm not reading anything 
Dark Crisis. I'm sorry. I read Dark Crisis number one, and that was the extent of my Dark Crisis terror. So, abstain. I sacrificed myself. I read it. Um, I, I was impressed that they went the uh, isekai route. So, if you don't know what isekai is, it's it's a it's a Japanese manga a- anime story trope where. Uh, you suddenly find yourself in a, a body that is either another world or a baby in another world or like you're reborn or uh, as in this one, you find yourself in your own body a few years prior and you have to relive your life knowing what you know now in the past. So it's, I mean, good on them, <laughs> but uh, whoever was n- narrating it, was it, it was either Cassie or Kiss- Kissy? I, I don't know. But they were really annoying and depressing, and it was like emo 101. It was awful. Anyway, thumbs down. (laughs) (laughs) Thumbs down for uh, Dark Crisis Young Justice. Originally, I wrote down neutral, but the more I talked about it, the more I realized it really was just awful. That was a wonderful explanation, though. Thumbs down. Nightwing number 93, Tom Taylor. I mean, this is the Tom Taylor cast, is it not? It is the Tom Taylor cast. So this is two thumbs up and another two thumbs up for Ian as well. On Ian's behalf, um, I just gave it one thumbs up, but it was a lot of fun and and delightful, and I'm glad we're finally moving along with the Heart Snatcher storyline. Because I think one problem Ian has with this book is that things are introduced and they don't move them along quickly enough. Which I mean, whatever. it's going to be interesting to see how that turns up because him and him and uh, oh shoot, my head went totally blank. Blockbuster. Sister? No, oh, Blockbuster. Blockbuster. He and Blockbuster, I could see, you know, an internal gang war going on between those two. It's going to be quite interesting. Maybe, yeah. Except the, the heart guy only seems to have one associate. Oh, it's, yeah, it's just him and that, and that one yeah. guy who brings them all of different hearts. His, his anti-Alfred. I'm assuming, um, I'm assuming Heartless is uh, some type of cyborg. Considering how he connected... Tra- is that is that orange red neon thing on his chest? Is that like a physical thing, or is he just glowing? Over I time? have no idea, but I, I I remember that panel where the guy seemed to connect the USB drive or USB cable to his arm. So yeah, it makes me true. wonder. Oh yeah, you know, you're right. He's not completely. He's not completely human. Yeah. So he's cyborg of cyborg of some sort. Or some sort. Batman Beyond the White Knight number four. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. This book is so much fun. So, <gasps> again, I said a long time ago when we got the, got the original White... When we got the original White Knight universe, how I love the characterization of Duke, and that continues. Oh, it's, yes. And, and, you know, as funny as he looks with that Robin suit on, it's so awesome. <laughs> It is so awesome. It looks I love it, that he likes it. Like, he doesn't want to take it off. He's like, I'm Robin now, and this is my outfit. <laughs> I will say this. I will say this. It looks so much better than that damn Batman outfit in Future State Gotham. Oh, God. Oh, no, you're right. You mean uh, Dick's? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, you're is, right. 100%. Um, I loved the reveal about Terry at the end. Like, I got really excited. <sighs> That like Terry knew all along that uh, Derek Powers is yanking his chain, and oh, oh it was so exciting. <gasps> well, well it, it makes me wonder if he always knew, or if something just clicked. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. But I do like that he's fig- he's either had already figured it out on his own, or he's figured it out on his own. Yeah, I like that. Because having Terry be the bad guy was making me sad. Because even though Batman Beyond isn't my favorite by any stretch of the imagination i've always liked terry terry's i like terry at least at least i at least they don't go the route of as we get at the end of the animated series uh terry finding out that he's technically bruce's son i'm so happy we're not going that route <laughs> yeah because that's just weird batman catwoman number 12 the final issue <sighs> I am going to give it a neutral only because one, it took forever to finish and two is not in continuity. So I don't care that they finally said I do, but the art is wonderful. You can't, you cannot not love Clayman's art. 
I, I gave it an obligatory thumbs up because I once said that if Batman and Catwoman got married, I'd have to give it a five out of five. But it is definitely not an enthusiastic thumbs up because I don't understand. Because there was three storylines going on, a mid, a beginning of the time together, a middle of the time together, and an end of their time together after Bruce is dead. And I did not like how the old lady Selena ended. Uh Middle Selena got married, which is great, and she got reunited with with Lois, which was fantastic. And then I don't understand what happened to the beginning storyline. Uh, all, all I will say, old man, and you gotta have to get the bleep ready because old woman Selena was a bit. I mean, she, totally. She, I mean, the way she talked to Helena. Mm-hmm. Was, if, I mean, Mom, I love you, but I will slap the out of you. You know? She was so rude just, and just mean. Terrible. And I was like, ugh. No. I don't I don't care what kind of villain you are. You don't treat your kids like that. Like, that's just, that's its own form of villainy is, is bad parents. People who need CPS to come pick up the kids. Like, ugh. No. So what did you think about the idea that uh, Reaper was still alive? I mean... See, that's ugh, I, that's the storyline I also didn't like. No, yeah, so I didn't like that how rude Selena was to Helena. That was awful. Um, but then I also didn't like that What's-Her-Butt was alive the whole time and working with Selena. Like, uh, it just made the whole thing confusing. And I'm, go- I'm going to have to reread the whole, th- whole thing to ha- have a final opinion. Because, again, it was a thir- 13 issues that took, like, two years <laughs> or something. And then so. you got time jump after time jump after time yeah. jump. So you just... Yeah. Con- confused this bloop mm-hmm, and it just, mm-hmm. it, it, it just didn't make for a great story and if this was the original way tom king was going to end his batman run seriously i would have been 100 percent peeled i would not i would been i would have been I, I, I mean i was already down on Everything since 50 and how the entire run ended. But I would have just been pissed if he would have stayed on those final issues. And that was the story we got. I think I agree. If this had been the finale in Batman, I think confusion and what the hell would have abounded. Yes, I agree. Batman Fortress number two. Uh, I'm going to give it a neutral trending up. Um, I'm not sure where the story is going. I'm hoping it's not a Batman story starring Superman since uh, it would reveal that the technology is is. Kryptonian in some way, um, so I'm I'm not crazy about that idea. And for some reason, as someone who's loved um, Derek Robinson's art, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm something seems off. So, but <laughs> I want to see where the story goes before I give it a final a final final. Well. I need one more issue to decide if I'm going to continue picking up this story on my poll list. Uh, How many issues is it supposed to be? I don't know. Let me check. See, because in the on the cover, you know, usually if it's a miniseries, it says two of, mm. but, and it doesn't do that. So I don't know how many issues it's supposed to be, but I, I'm going to give with a one more issue and. Uh, then decide whether or not it's going to stay on my poll list. Uh, abstain. I am not interested in the story. Uh, <laughs> DC Fandom says eight issues. Eight. Okay. Harley Quinn number 16. You're joking, right? <laughs> abstain for Theo. <laughs> uh, thumbs up. This was an exciting issue. Um, I liked it. I kind of, I know I was a little done with this storyline, but I we got... S- Sam, is that her name? Sam's backstory, and um, and the reveal that that not reveal, but uh, 
Harley comes bounding in to see Kevin and greet him warmly. And in the room is the woman who has been framing Harley this whole time. Bum, bum, bum. I liked it. Uh, and then lastly, task for Z number nine. Epstein. Uh, I think thumbs up, but I think it's good that this is ending. <laughs> or is it? I don't even know anymore. I'm uh, it's, it's supposed I'm to be right ending, yet. but I, I don't know when. Mm, don't care because I'm <laughs> not. I don't care about Jason running around with a bunch of dead villains. Yeah, and I don't understand how this could possibly be in continuity because a few of the people who are dead are also in other books. So <laughs> who knows? Uh, yeah. Uh, just, it's just, I mean, other than the fact that we haven't seen Jason in a while in the pages of Batman, have we? Is not really. He doesn't it, even really show up in, in Bat Family things. Yeah. yeah. He's been in Urban Legends a little bit, but. That's don't fine. count. Don't count. Yep, because Urban Legends. Poop, poop. So, in order to make this a Tom Taylor cast, and there was one Tom. Tom Taylor book. Um, we need to discuss Tom Taylor and have have only positive. Well, not only positivity, but uh, I think less uh, uh, prejudice. Wait, wait, I need to go in. I need to go in and, and smack Ian around some more. <laughs> uh, we'll verbally, yeah, pound, pound him around a bit. Yeah, um, quiet. So, what do we like about Tom Taylor? I don't know what I like about Tom Taylor, but for, well, there's something about his writing style and the way he gives some voices to characters. You know, Ian always says, oh, it's just he does all this fan service. Well, sometimes that's what readers need, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm okay with that. I mean, people harp on, or at least Ian harps on, Dark Knights are still, but it, it's such a good story and how it gives us a different Batman, a Batman mm -hmm. that we've never thought of. Holy crap, Bruce Wayne is half Kryptonian. He's really going to look <gasps> but now. He finally so, has superpowers. Yes, you know, so it, I, 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 I don't, there's not one particular thing about Tom Taylor that makes me say this is it other than the fact that for some reason he always teams up with some hellified artists <laughs> yeah I think there's been very few projects he's done where I didn't like the art I like yeah I like the voice he gives to people and I like how many AU stories that they let him do and I like the creative use he does with the characters. I like that he changes them because it's a fun way and he does it well and I like the different aspects of a character or new aspects to your favorite character that he creates and if that's not your jam, I get that, I understand. Um, but now, now let me you just also, say, uh -huh. you know for a while we, we, you and I at least have always said, you know, we want to see him on Batman. We want to see, we want to see him on Batman. Do Batman, do Detective. I don't know if I want that now. I kind of feel like you feel. He does such a wonderful job doing AU that he needs to just stay there. And <laughs> what, what, what kind of backs that up is the notion of your other question you know, as to why Son of Kal-El is less enjoyable, you know, mm -hmm. so maybe, you know, him having to stick to continuity may not be too much of a strong point, although, although his run on Friendly, Neighbor Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man at Marvel was absolutely mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> but um, I I prefer him sticking to AU and doing the things that he's doing there. No, but that's... I do I do like what he's doing on Nightwing. I think Ian's complaint is maybe valid that he's introducing things and not using it. But 
I think I'm I'm okay with that because I don't I don't mind that something is introduced as something that may come along later or that will develop slowly. Um, I think one of his uh, complaints in particular was was the sister that's introduced and then no real relationship is is started. But I almost think that's more realistic because like you're introduced to a girl that it turns out your father slept around and, and is your half sister i would be awkwardated by that i i think it's okay that 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 dick isn't running into a relationship with this new sister um but anyway and he still does have a relationship it's just they're not running in full force to have a close one uh, I, I, and and i remember he he hates it even more so now cuz i remember when she was first in- introduced. It was like, why do we need another Zuko? Zuko already has a daughter. Why he needs another daughter? Why can't he use the, the daughter that's already there? He just wants to have a. He just wants to have a character of his own. But now yeah. it's revealed and that a lot of, a lot of she's that. not a Zuko. She's a Grayson, and he hates it even she's more so. Yeah. Um. But this isn't a knock. This is not to knock Ian. This is just to share our opinion <laughs> about yes, why Tom Taylor the, is is pretty good. Um, Tom Taylor. Nightwing this this week was pretty good with with the love confession, even though it was kind of accidental. Now, what I don't understand, there were a lot of people who were hating on that. I mean, again, me, are they core? Me, are they Cory shippers, or are well, they just not like the way it was done? Of, of course, there were the the Cory shippers, the Dick Cory shippers, but there were some who were just complaining about the fact that, well, it's not the first time he told somebody he loved him. It's not the first time he told Babs he loved her. He, he, he told B he loved her. He, so so why is this so much of a big thing? Well, it really wasn't a big thing, but it was just something nice to see, you know, because yeah. it was something that these two have been building to, especially since Taylor's been on Nightwing. Now, again, B was the only piece of the Uberic timeline that I wouldn't have minded that I would have been okay with sticking around. But if we can't have B, because again, I, I enjoyed their relationship. Their mm-hmm. relationship was really natural considering, you know, he still had his memory issues. But if we can't have B and, you know, Dick Corey is what it is based on what we got in uh, Teen Titans Academy. Then, you know, why not Babs? You know, the notion that, yeah, you know, I mean, there was one who complained, well, they're more like sister and brother. They've never been like sister and brother throughout, yeah. the, you know, that, that has never been the case. And, you know, if, if, you know, why not Dick and Babs? You know, it, it, it's just the natural. And I think that's one of those, like, classic pairings that's been around for so long. Almost, you may not be your favorite. You know what? That's okay. Almost as classic but, as Bruce and Selena. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'll be fair. I'll be fair. Bruce and Talia, too. Like, they had a romantic relationship before it was retconned into date rape. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I that's okay. It's okay. That is the that is the one thing about Grant Morrison in his run that I absolutely hated was that date rape arc. Yeah, just to yeah. create Damien, but it is what it is now. It is what it is now. Um, what are you enjoying about Dark Knights of Steel? That story is so completely different, other than deceased. It's so it's it's so different than anything I think I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> Again, as I, as I said earlier, it it gives us an absolutely new look at Batman and Bruce Wayne, you know, throughout his history. I mean, how many stories have we had where he actually has superpowers? You know, very few compared to everything else. And this take on him is absolutely... <laughs> It's absolutely wonderful. Um, and the way it happened was a shock because, again, up until that point, it really seemed like it was a House of L story, mm-hmm. you know, focusing on the coming war between 
the um, Black Lightning and, you know, his family and the elves. And then all of a sudden the reveal happens. And then you realize, oh, crap, it really is a Batman story. And <laughs> I am there for it, you know, bring on more Dark Knights of Steel. I like that there's no, like, uh, other than, I think, Ivy's in it, I guess. But, the, like, the villains in the story, quote-unquote, are are the heroes in our story. And it's more like a misunderstanding or maybe something would honestly happen between two kingdoms. Like, the fear of the unknown or the fear of magic for the kal So, it's like the magic side and the superhero side. Um, I like that aspect, that it's not so much good versus evil. It's it's two sides that don't understand each other. Um, yeah, and, and, and again, the, you know... As the story is being written, it, it really is a misunderstanding with everything mm-hmm. that's that's going on. But I mean, there were just so many so many things that were just crazy with how with how it happens. You know, so I'm trying to remember, um who became the Joker? I can't remember. Oh, oh. I don't think we know yet. Yeah. We do? Yeah. Or did you read Ed? No, wait, did I read ahead? Do we need to? I think you did, because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, damn. I mean, we got the Titans. You know. Yes, uh, we got we the got, Titans, we got but the I think Titans, that was it. And, you know, Raza Ghoul is actually Edgigan. 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 Is he? Yeah. You didn't see that? I think, I think you're reading it. No, wait. How am I reading ahead? Hold on. I just missed yeah. that then. Yeah. Turns the edge again in, in, this in number seven? Yeah. Oh, you're right. It's the Teen Titans or the Mr. and Mrs. Kent or something. Oh, it's Beast Boy. He becomes a dragon. <laughs> yeah. That was great. I don't remember Joker. But anyway, whatever. It's all great. What? I'm sure I just totally forgot because the, it, it, there's too much time between. Constantine's role and... Yes. And I love Constantine in this book so much. Boy, because... Who, who's the green man? You might be right, but I don't think he's played a huge part yet. Who? Joker? Joker. Because it looks like he's just like a demon of this world. I don't think he's played a big part in no, anything yet. Oh, no. I think he it, is. It looks like it was just a dream that Tim had. No. Wait. See, now you're going to make me look stiff. Because <laughs> I only see someone who could be Joker at the very beginning. And it, that turns out to be a nightmare that tim is having right that was or no that's bruce just kidding it's a nightmare bruce is having yeah it was a nightmare bruce is having so there's this cow yeah yeah that's bruce because something happened and i'm sure you're right i have a horrible memory when it comes to this stuff and 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 there i mean a month between issues is enough for me to just completely forget completely what's going on so it's very possible something's happened with joker you might be right um but i do like that the classic villains aren't the main villains. Like, yeah, because even th- th- Ivy, that's not where the main tension in the story is. Yeah, because even Ivy, who we think is bad, turns out to be good when Harley mm-hmm. shows up and she she's mm-hmm. able to calm her down. And I love that Alfred's still alive. Well, so I guess to distract, I have something to talk about while you look that up. Okay. Um, I'll mention what I don't really like about Kal El. Because we can't just have only love for Tom Taylor. Yeah, I I think some things about Kal-El, or Son of Kal-El, confuse me. Like, I don't know. There, there's some things that I just don't quite understand. And then, yeah, it's a pretty... It's a pretty preachy book. And I think he's so good at characterizations and writing good stories that I think that's how he's meaning to write it. And that's some people's jam. It's It's not my jam. And I, I just, this whole, and maybe if I was younger, I'd like it better, <laughs> but he's got a pretty naive look at the world. And it's just, uh, I, I feel for him because he is fighting the world that doesn't want to hear what he has to say in the book. So there's that. It's just, I find it somewhat irritating. And I think like Theo, I'm just still so salty that John is aged up in the first place. And Yeah. No amount of the new Justice League being 
Damien and John is is going to fix that because that dynamic of of small, innocent, pure hearted ten year old John is gone forever. Cause it is it is not as cute on a, on an eighteen year old. I don't know, uh, but anyway. They can't all be home runs. And as long as someone likes it, I mean, good for him. Good. I'm glad I'm glad someone likes it. Because, again, it's not poorly written. It's just not something I want to have to sit through and read as an entertainment book. Lex Luthor is the Joker. Luthor is the Joker. I totally missed that. I'm going to have to go through and read these again. I- issue four. Um, issue four. Lex Luthor was a, was a guide to the Waynes who tried to warn them about the elves. And the coming of the elves, and uh, but he's basically, you know, he's basically uh, made an outcast more or less. And so, a meteor crash, a green meteor crash into the earth, and he touches it, and he becomes the Joker. But the meteor contained the lantern ring, and so he ends up uh, killing Martha. But yeah, I need yeah. to reread it. But there's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of intricacies. There's a lot of characters and a lot of moving pieces. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and then and it's AU that, and it's and it's and just the idea totally that he you. he's allowed to do so much more and not have to worry about you know continuity except in the pages of that series itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So you know, as we get into this final volume of Deceased. You know, he's going to have to make sure he sticks to the pages of those previous volumes. But other than that, kill, kill away. <laughs> yes, and I think that's another thing that Ian has a problem with is is just his okay. It's the Tom Taylor's okayness with just killing people off. And whereas I understand these are characters we love. That's the beauty of AU is that you can just kill someone off and see what happens. And that's okay. Like... I don't know. I, these are just fictional characters. Come on. <laughs> I say as I see the, at the idea of Catwoman not being with Batman forever and always. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hypocritical. Yes. Yes. Whatever. But don't care. <laughs> am, I okay with, am I okay with it? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, is there anything else you want to say? Because um, anything about deceased, we want that you. If you want to hear anything about deceased, again, seek out the TBU special podcasts, and we have a plethora of things to say about deceased. Yes, and you want to hear more? Let us know. Yeah, we love talking about deceased. Anything else you want to say? Nope. Okay. In that case, it is time to thank our Patreons. Uh, if you like listening to TBU Podcast and, and checking out the TBU website and visiting us on Discord, then you'll want to help support the Batman universe however you can. I started as um, volunteering to sub for a co-host, and suddenly I'm hosting the podcast this week. Of course, Ian might have something to say about that. <laughs> Um, and now I edit, and I also know Theo writes reviews, and Ian writes reviews, and everyone who who gets involved is just a happy family, and we like um, supporting the TBU po- uh, podcast and the universe however we can. And so if you would like to give financially, uh, you can do that over on our Patreon, or if you use one of our affiliate links on the website, a small part of your purchase goes to support us, and it doesn't cost you any extra. And um, we also have a Patreon. Uh, you can either give direct through PayPal or you can set up a Patreon, which is always appreciated. And when you do, you get uh, you get um, mentioned here on the podcast. So I would like to thank Lisa Slack, Ian Miller, Gerald Green, Joshua Lappin Putoni, Rob O, Tim Garassi, Robert Lewis, Stephanie Mounts. Donovan Morgan Grant, Stanton's Grave, Donald Townsend, Ed Grouse, Captain America, Mary Garrett, Austin Davis, John McCloskey, Cesar Diaz, Jessica Morales, and David Richards. Thank you so much for your support. We would literally not be able to do this without you, um, or it would cost us money. <laughs> so thank you for your support. Thank you for keeping. Thank you for keeping the lights on, and um, have a wonderful week. This has been Steph. And this is Theo. Viva la revolution. Viva la revolution. Ian will hopefully be back next week uh, or next time. And uh, we will see you then. Depends on how we feel. Huh? Depends on how we feel. 
Depends on how we feel. It's true. I'm traveling again, so maybe I'll get COVID again. (laughs) 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 But for realsies, bye. Let her come be a detective. Right? She she escapes. Right? Like she doesn't even go to prison. Correct. Spoilers. Oh, whoops. Is that later? Yep. (laughs) Wait. Yeah. That's where is that? That's Robin when she escapes. No, they mention it in in the issue. In this one? I'm pretty sure. Like, cause I haven't read Robin, and I know that she's not in prison. I am trying to remember what happens. I think you're right. I don't I don't know. It's just... Mm. It's a little unsatisfying to have Brion have such a decent motivation, even if she he goes a little bit overboard with, like, I'll kill everyone in my way. I'm like, maybe don't do that, but... Uh, so... Um, yeah, yeah, no. Your mother honored the deal Roz and turned herself in. Oh. No, she totally escapes. Why do I know that she escapes? What did I read? Detective Comics? No, I didn't read Detective Comics. My virgin eyes haven't read the coming up issues. Anyway. Yeah, the, the only way I know she escaped is that um, it's in, it's in, sorry, Steph, Robin. No, no. Are we going after Bam? Oh. I think in in the, at the end where they're talking about, I guess I got the impression that she she, yeah yeah okay well so okay no at the end when Roz is coming out of the pit he says where's Talia they got away, uh we are go are we going after Batman and Talia, uh, so I guess I just interpret that as she never made it, she she escaped the DEO, no. so maybe I was reading too much into what his lackeys no, were because- saying. Because again, spoiler Steph Virgin ears. <laughs> she escapes. The escape actually happens in Robin that's coming up. Yeah. Hmm. So the fact that. Oh, I can't even say that. Cut this out, Steph. So the fact that. Virgin ears! <laughs> sorry, we have just. 